What is going on, guys? Happy Wednesday. Welcome to everybody in the chat so far. Got Gabriel, Gao Gao, Pets, Petsotics, I think, Joseph, Minecrafter04, Matt P. What is going on, guys? Click Clacks, Rogue Aquariums. Welcome to the Wednesday Night Live stream. Uh, so lately, I've been getting lots of random questions about dosing and how to, when to dose and what to dose and how much and all that type of stuff. And coincidentally, it's also been two weeks since I did the video on the Coral Ulcer. So at the end of the stream, we're also going to do a giveaway on that. So I figured it was quite fitting today. Um, if you guys do have any questions as we're going, uh, just feel free to ask away. There is a couple ones I've had already just adding to the list. Gabriel, what's going on? Gao Gao, what's up? Tank looks amazing. Thank you so much. That was actually a clip. I just threw the camera by the tank for about five minutes of my lunch break and got a little clip for any little backdrop for now. So I have to make a bunch of new ones for the live stream. 420 Reefer, what is going on? Welcome to Wednesday Night Live Stream. Merry Christmas, guys. A uh, little couple things. If you guys have not entered all the contest, you should. Too late now for the dosing one because I had ended at midnight last night. But next week is going to be the draw for the Copapods from copapods.com and Canada Copapods. As well as the next week is going to be the draw for the Poseidon Salinity Pen. And I still have to film next Monday's video, which will be another giveaway. So I was kind of stoked. I thought it would be a lot of fun to have like a weekly contest for the month in the Christmas spirit. So if you guys have not entered those, get in there. You might as well. Method, what is going on? Davis, welcome, welcome. Um, so for later, uh, near the end of the stream, love your cans. Thank you. I got an awesome collection growing. Well, I had about, actually my collection doubled a month ago. One of my buddies, Brad, you, you've seen his tank. He had, um, the Focus Tronics and he also has an Elkatronic on his tank, which I still got to go over and film that cause he's actually dosing with his. So I want to go get an update and see how that's working out for him. Anyway, so he had a copper band butterfly that was picking at his can. So I acquired and traded for a bunch of his can. So my collection has doubled as of a month or two ago, so that was awesome. So, that's been really good. Uh, Inventory King, what's going on, man? Welcome, welcome. Ravencock, welcome to the stream. Uh, so, side note, Ty's Reef, welcome, buddy, welcome. Naked Reefer, Matt P, thumbs up, appreciate it. If you guys enjoy these streams, hit that thumbs up. Makes me happy. I don't know if it actually does anything. It may or may not make the YouTube gods happy, so always appreciate it. Uh, Kyle Murphy, welcome, buddy. Philip Wells, welcome, guys. Um, so today, I wanted to talk about dosing. Now, a couple different ways to think about it or to look at it. Lots of people in the Reef Dudes Facebook group have started in fairly new tanks and they're not necessarily dosing yet. They kind of want to know, you know, how do I know when to dose? Um, <laughs> Alcatronic is awesome. It is. I actually just heard it like two minutes ago testing my tank. So what's the pH? Or right, bleh. Six. 8.68. There you go. We're still in the happy zone. Uh, what's going on? Click clacks. Triton. Um, all down to 730-ish. Starting out. Dose my 90. Didn't want to shock the system. Started super low. Is it possible to start too slow? Okay. It's not too slow or fast about dosing. It's how much you're affecting the swing of it. So if you're dosing alkalinity, I wouldn't want to go more than about half a dkh per day. Um, so if you, you know, if you're only bumping it up 0.2 or 0.5, fair game, but I wouldn't want to jump from seven to eight in one dose. I think that'd be too much. I would want to manually dose that. Or if you have a doser, that's even better to split it up. Uh, let's pull the chat over. Um, haven't started yet to dose. I have all my stuff. My elk was declining by 0.2 a day. Okay. So that's perfect. You know what your elk is declining by. Um, so the DKH Dilly, stop dose for four weeks, maintain the same level, then sometimes increases by 0.4. Okay, so if you have a newer tank or you're adding or taking out corals, your dosing requirements could change. Um, you could also add a new coral and it could do nothing for three months. And then one day it's finally decides it's happy and it starts to grow and it starts drinking that elk and calcium. So she has something like a Monty cap or there's certain corals that really suck up those nutrients out of your water. Um, so it, it will change, right? If you frag a bunch of corals, they could suck up a bunch of elk all of a sudden because they're healing up. So there's all kinds of things that can change it. So you could have your tank perfectly dosed, everything's all set, but your needs are going to change over time. This is why you still have to test once in a while. I know lots of people don't like testing, but you still got to. <laughs> Wait up, I'll be a few minutes. You're already on, NATO. I can see you right there. Okay, so first order business is to know when to dose. 
One, you actually have to test your tank. There is, there's no way to know if you don't test, right? If you have a small tank, you can likely just get away with a weekly water change as long as it's not an SPS dominant pack tank. Like on my nano tank, I could potentially get away with like a higher alkalinity salt, like the um, one of the Red Sea ones, or like the Fritz Red Box, I think is the other one. Like one or reef crystals possibly, I think they're 11, but you, you could do that. You're basically, I don't like that method as much, but if you have a small tank, it's going to be cheaper and easier, at least for starting up. Cause you're basically giving it here. Here's your stockpile of nutrients. It slowly depletes it throughout the week. And then you do your water change and replenishes it. If you think about, you know, you have your refrigerator full of food and everything in there's a little calcium alkalinity, you do your grocery shopping, you can slowly pull from it, but eventually you're going to run out of groceries or your, your stock of food and you're going to have to replenish it. So you can either do that in bulk once a week with like a water change or something through your salt if you don't have a super high demand tank, or you can top it off a little bit every single day, which is how I personally prefer to do it. Reefing with, oh, what's going on, buddy? Braveheart Reefer, Tyrone Battle. I uh, use the test strips and my all was 300. I'm assuming you mean calcium because that would be in the 300 range. Calcium, that is super low. Calcium, I like it to be kind of 380 to 450 is kind of the general range. I like kind of the 420 to 450-ish. Mine's actually closer to 500 right now, but I like to keep it up around there. Uh, if I plan to use Kelk using an Apex Tom's Aqualifter until the solution OS super saturated and add two part. Okay, so one of the easiest ways, producer reef, welcome. So one of the easiest ways to start dosing, if you want to keep it simple, is to use Kalkwasser. Now, Kalkwasser is what's called calcium hydroxide. Uh, you can buy it in a pure form and like a, a reefing branded one. You could buy like, I think it's called Mrs. Wages Pickling Lime at some grocery stores. Is there a difference? Probably a little bit, huge difference, questionable. Um, so usually if, you, okay, so you can buy off the shelf stuff, like um, same with dosing alkalinity, you can use baking soda. Is there a difference between the stuff and the fish branded ones? It might be slightly more pure, some like the farmer grades. Whether or not 100% matters is a whole nother question. Uh, do 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 OG's fish room. I had to order Hannah test kits as I'm colorblind. Honestly, what's going on, Refloco? Some of the test kits, like if you look at some like the nitrate ones and stuff, I have such a hard time telling is it this shade of pink or that shade of pink? Like they're so subtle to the changes that it's hard to read. So I really like digital ones. Okay. Now that being said, in order to test, you actually have to test your tank. And for starting out, if you are new, you haven't tested or done anything yet. Um, there is, this is a bit of a mixed one, but there's the Red Sea Foundations. I do have a link. It is an Amazon link in the description. If you do buy it, I do get a little bit kickback. So if you're buying it anyway, share the love. Um, but that is by far the best bang for your buck test kit is the Red Sea Foundations personally. I find it the, the like higher quality kit, easier to read and everything else with the Red Sea Foundations. Now, that being said, I also like some of the HANA ones because they're digital. Uh, oil slick. Uh, quick question. So Nipah Reefer, uh, dosing, I seem to have a brownish, a bit of film on the top of my water, like an oil slick. That is probably a protein layer on top of your water. I don't know about the brown part, but generally if you see a bit of buildup or a film on your surface, it's usually protein. So usually adding more flow to break it up and get it down your overflow. We'll have to sell that. Okay, so actually testing. One quick tip, organizing. It is good to organize your test kit. I use one of these little tool containers, little storage container, throw all my test kits in there. When I want to test something, I can just pop out whatever respective kit it is. So say I want to test like magnesium, I got all my little kit right there. So it makes it nice and easy. So that's a really good way to do it. Um, same thing like, you know, my phosphate's got my HANA checkers in there. Rather than having, I used to have this big pile of those little plastic containers. So I don't know, that's my preferred way to do it now. A question I get asked all the time is what are my favorite test kits? I have, okay, so the old Canna Calcium Checker was very finicky. I got the newer one now. I bought this one at Macna, but it has the little tritration. I think it's called Tritrator. It doses a very specific amount for that 0.1 mil, and it's made it much more reliable and better. So I do like that one. That I like the newer one. My only complaint with the Hanna one is that I find the, at least in Canada, the refills just seem over the price to me. They seem expensive. 
So I'll use that once in a while, but I use the Red Sea Calcium the most. Um, alkalinity, I do prefer the Hana one, just because it's quick and easy. Uh, magnesium, I generally use the Red Sea one. So if you're starting out, Red um, Red Sea Foundations, there is a link in the description if you want to help support the channel a bit. But um, that is by far best bang for your buck because you get all three for like 45 bucks for all your tests. Uh, so Nipa, do you have a sump or hang on the back filter? Will 20% water change mess up dosing levels? Okay. So when you're picking, <laughs> yes, you are Mirrors Reef. I just saw you called. Um, so when you are dosing a tank, ideally you want to pick a number and stick to it. So per personally, I like to pick eight and a half for alkalinity. Uh, calcium, I like 350 or sorry, sorry, uh, around 450. And for magnesium, I like to be more around the 1400-ish range. So in theory, you want to find a salt that matches whatever parameters you're keeping. That way, if you're, as long as your dosing stuff's all in check and you do, you can do a water change and it's not going to swing your parameters, right? It should have zero impact. So whatever, I don't care what salt you use, but pick one that matches what parameters you target. That is probably one of the biggest kind of tips on that one. So if you can do a little one or you can do a big water change, it's not going to affect it. Now, if you're not dosing, one of the methods from the higher elk salts, like your Reef Crystals, your Red Sea Coal Pro, or your Fritz Red Box RPM, is that you have higher elk, and then you give it a higher chunk, and that slowly depletes, and you do a water change. So that is a method if you don't want to dose. I still prefer dosing because you're not having those swings. It's just keeps things stable, and I find it happier long term. Okay, so when do I need to know I start dosing? So the first thing you have to do is check your tank. Um, if you only have a few softy corals, a couple of hammers, a couple of LPSs, water changes are likely enough. If you're adding fasting, faster growing stuff, like uh, Monty Caps are a big one, because those, like the plating ones that go outwards, those guys suck a lot of alkalinity and calcium. So you're going to have to start testing your water. Now, if you test your tank, if you test your tank on Sunday, everything, do a water change, and your elk is nine, and you wait a week, and your test at the end of the week, your elk is eight. That's about one DKH swing throughout the week. It's probably not the end of the world, and you're probably okay with just water changes, providing you do water changes to get it back up there. Now, if you're testing your tank and you're having a massive drop, if you're getting like half a DKH a day or a DKH a day, like that's a pretty big swing. And your tank's not gonna survive going a whole week with that. That's a massive swing. So that's when I'd really start looking at dosing. If it's more than like a 0.1 dka today i would on this or point one yeah point one or point two a day i would start considering you should start dosing soon now you can absolutely dose manually if you got the dedication you can pre-mix it you can get a little um graduated cylinder or a little beaker and like pre-measure and dose every single day i'm not that dedicated i prefer automating stuff i love dosers because it makes life easier uh, okay, quickly catch up on the chat before I miss it. Uh, you don't find magnesium Red Sea foundation kits higher than other test kits. I only really use the Red Sea one, to be honest. But it's usually in my general range. Like, Yeah. I can't say I've noticed a big swing, but I use Red Sea basically all the time for that. It's, as long as it stays consistent. Um, that, Actually, that's another very good point. If you're testing and your levels are like one test kit may be different like one test kit could say 8.3 and another one says 8.7 right there could very well be a variation now every test test kit has a certain range of accuracy and there's also user area right you push in that extra mill or drop and it's going to swing things the biggest important thing is that you are consistent so if you're going to put in that extra drop or when you're using that little tri trader make sure it's at the exact same point every single time or your water's at the exact same point every single time because if it's not because you're being consistent right so even if your test gets out of whack or you're out of whack it doesn't matter it's the the t goal is to keep your levels consistent so corals can adapt to an elk of seven they can adapt to an elk of ten it's just that it's the same every single day uh now another little thing on the vials when you pour water into it you're gonna have like a little dip and that's called a meniscus so when you're reading on a syringe or a vial like here's one of the uh, one of the Hannah ones with that line I make sure the bottom of the dip is what's touching the line that's the bottom meniscus that's kind of like the true value of that 10 mils so that's just make sure you always be consistent with that because that's one thing that can mess with your test a little bit 
Okay, so Hassan and my crane went through a cycle. After I did a water change, LG started to show up. I have been dosing no pox regularly, but no ill effects. Uh, that may have been a coincidence. If you did a massive water change, it could have messed with your cycle a little bit. Uh, one of the biggest things to look at is just what are you doing for nutrient export? If it's just regular LG, I mean, it could likely just a buildup of nutrients in your water. Usually water changes will help. Could have been something that's already started and just started to show itself a bit more. But in, in theory, a water change shouldn't really change much on its own. Uh, dosing pump is failing on me. Aquamatic Evo 4 getting air in the airline. Is there no way air can get side bubbles in the pump heads, I guess? Okay, so if you have a doser, first thing to check, the pumps on a doser are generally pretty reliable. If you... Do I have a dosing head right here? I do. Give me one sec. Yeah. So, on a dosing head. Generally, on some of the cheaper pumps, there will be more like an airline and not a medical grade tubing. And that is generally what will fail on pumps. If you're getting airline in there, either the connectors where these little barbs connect to your doser hose, to your airline or your RODI and whatever you're using, that could potentially be an issue. Um, so either that's your issue or there's a crack or a leak in this hose. And that will happen over time, especially on cheaper hoses. If you, some of the budget ones will happen. Uh, if I can get it open. But inside of this, there is some rubber rollers. And what they do is they pinch this hose and essentially squeeze the stuff through it. Now this hose can wear down over time. So sometimes you can buy a whole new head or you can replace that hose. Then your dosing head could be good again. Um... You couldn't chat because you said you're at work. I was at work. I get off work at three, which is exactly when my live stream starts. Um, reefing with, oh, what would the oils be from? Yeah, so usually, Nipa Reefer, you're saying there's oils on your water. That's usually, if it's brown, that could be something else. But generally, like on my tank, before I added a power head to the far end, I'd get a bit of a white film on the peninsula end. And I didn't really notice it top down, but looking bottom up, I'd notice it. And that's a protein layer. It's usually leftover stuff from food and other proteins or organics that you're adding to the tank. How can I get Coraline into my reef? Okay, reefing with Margilia. Um, so Coraline algae is something you have to introduce. Ideally, you would get a rock or snails or frag plug, something with that from someone else, another reefer, and introduce it to your tank. Now, the Coraline algae, like anything else, also requires... It doesn't necessarily need to be stable, but it needs alkalinity and calcium. So make sure you have decent stable levels of your calcium and alkalinity in coralline algae that will also help it grow as well as, you know, decent lighting. But you do need to introduce it. So find, you know, go to a pet store, get a rock, get something that has coralline on it. Um, or if you're scraping glass in someone else's tank, you can kind of collect that and add it to your tank and introduce that coralline algae. But you do need to get it into your tank somehow for it to start growing. <coughs> All right, so Kevin, do you prefer to dose equally over 24 hours of elk? through the night or calcium through the day? Does it make a difference? Okay, so it does make a little bit of a difference. So I used to dose calcium in the day, in alkalinity at night, and I changed it to both dosing 24 hours a day. If you check your alkalinity, it is consumed more in the day. So it does kind of work. You will get a bit of a kind of a seesaw swing back and forth with it by doing it that way. But my goal has been to try and keep the elk as stable as possible 24 hours a day. So I do like to dose it all the time. If you have low pH issues, that can be a possible solution for you. Um, what do you use to clean your vials? I should do a video on that. Okay, the uh, best way I found to clean the vials is one, just like a power head or anything else, I use vinegar and water. And I also put inside of an ultrasonic cleaner. So I'll do a little video. I'll do something on that one in the future because I just did it recently. So, yep. So I, I personally prefer to dose over 24 hours. If you're struggling with pH issues, then dosing at night can kind of help with that one. Uh, the oil slick could also be slime from corals. Yep, definitely what could be. What's up, DC Reefer? Uh, best way to remove slime is not sure if some power heads are pointed towards your overflow. Yeah, so generally, if your power heads are pointed away from your overflow, it's going to build it up and not necessarily let it reach the overflow where you can get skimmed out. Okay, so talking about that. Okay, so if you have pH issues, and actually one of the easier ways of dosing, which we kind of started talking about, got sidetracked, was with Kelkwasser. So Kelkwasser is calcium hydroxide side 
or pickling lime. It was kind of a German thing that eventually got adopted in North America. So it doses calcium and alkalinity. It is a bit of a balanced solution. The simplest way is you just put it in your auto top off. And I believe it is up to one and a half tablespoons per gallon of top off water is the maximum. But if you're just starting out, don't don't start that high. Start low. Start with like half a tablespoon per gallon of water. You want to mix it in, let it fully be dissolved and then doing it through auto top off. So every time your tank evaporates, it's going to squirt a bit into your tank and kind of boost it up. Now, there are some benefits to Kelkwasser. Um, it does raise your pH, and that's a big benefit for a lot of people. Uh, I haven't actually tested this, but supposedly will help reduce phosphates. It somehow binds it to a kind of a calcium precipitate somehow. So in theory, it will help with phosphates a bit. But now a couple things with it, though, is you generally want to have a fairly sealed auto top off because if air is getting exposed to it, I believe it lets it lose a bit of the potency. Um, I only did use it for a little while, so I'm not super educated on it, but I have tried it and I have tested it. Uh, a couple downsides. The powder itself is caustic, so you don't want to breathe that in, so be a bit careful when you're doing it. And if you accidentally dose way too much, that could cause a big pH swing and bad things happen. So you want to make sure you only do little bits, little dose. So auto top off, easiest way, second kind of way I've seen people do it, which to me it sounds a bit of a pain, but you'd set up a little container with a drip and just let it slowly drip overnight but then you're mixing and doing this on a daily basis. Um, the next level kind of way would be using a calc washer reactor, and that's where you can basically dump a ton of calc into it, like a couple cups worth, and it'll push your fresh water through it. And now it will always be dosing saturated water, and then you can only top it off a couple months, so that would be kind of like a great way to do it that would be the least amount of maintenance and still keep things going. It's a good way to do it. Uh, started my first reef tank for this year. When would you recommend that I should invest into a dosing system? Okay, if you start testing your tank and you're noticing more than I'd say, I'm gonna say 0 0.1, 0 0.2 dkh drop a day. So if you're if you're starting, you know, on Sunday, and your elk is nine, you wait a week and it drops down to like eight or seven, then I would really think to say to me that I'd want to start dosing personally. So you're not gonna know until you test. If you don't have a test kit, Red Sea Foundations is one of the easiest ones. Your best bang for your buck, I find personally. For about the 45 bucks or so, you get all three of the main tests. So that's that's where I would start for you if you haven't tested yet. Marine Depot, what's going on? Welcome. I've never heard of the phosphate thing. Yeah, I've read it in a few different places, but um, actually, Marine Depot, uh, Kelkwasser, removing or binding phosphates. Help it participate out. I've read this on a few places. I've never tested for it, so I can't confirm it, but supposedly one of the potential benefits of Kelkwasser. Um, so Minecrafter, since dosing, elk and pages 8.3, should I be concerned? Nope, 8.3 is a great place to be. Uh, you are perfect. Like a lot of people strive to get to 8.3, so you're good. Um, is it normal to change the dosing heads after seven months? It depends how much you're dosing. If you're dosing two mils a day, it's hardly any wear. But if you're dosing, you know, 200 mils a day, it's a lot more wear and tear on the heads. But it also depends on the quality of the tubing. Medical grade tubing generally will last a lot more. I've seen stuff that just looks like airline tubing in it, and that stuff's going to wear a lot quicker. Uh, the tubing, really, you could probably buy a big strip of this online for pretty cheap. So I would start with that. Or I've seen kits just buy the new heads for five, ten bucks. So I would honestly probably just try replacing one of the heads. It's probably your easiest best bet. <coughs> yeah, so it's one of those things that the motor itself is almost always fine. It's 95% of the time the tubes, or you said the air bubbles, it very well could be your connection. So go along your whole chain and make sure all those connections are solid. <coughs> okay, now when we're talking about dosing the tank, we, you, if you're dosing two slash three part, you're dosing calcium chloride, um, calcium chloride, and then you also have sodium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate. So sodium bicarbonate is essentially baking soda. You could buy it from the store and use that. You can buy the stuff that's actually branded for a reef tank. Whether there's a big difference in it, my unofficial theory, because I can't I don't have a lab, I can't say, but generally the aquarium brand and stuff is a little more pure. There's less chance of having byproducts, I guess. I don't know what the proper name would be for impurities in it. Um, I was previously dosing the, like some bulk industrial stuff to my tank. 
it was 96% calcium chloride or 94%. There was 6% of unknown. Who knows what the heck's mixed in there, right? Um, so now I did get some of the stuff to try out. So I got some of the Fritz stuff I'm going to try out. And so in theory, I mean, they're a chemical company. This should be pretty darn pure. So I'm going to try this for when I got to do some adjustments. Okay. So you guys, two different things. If you have sodium bicarbonate and sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate is essentially baking soda. It is what most people would use. If you're doing a bigger adjustment on your tank, you're going to want to use sodium bicarbonate. Now it's hydrated, which means it has less of an impact on pH. Um, now, if you, what some people do is they will bake it in the oven. What that does is it kind of dehydrates it and it's going to then have a bigger impact on your pH. So, I mean, you can buy it already done or you could do it yourself. But, um, so if I have, okay, so we've got sodium bicarbonate, sodium carbonate. Another one I get asked a lot is which one do you want to use? So if I'm doing a big bulk adjustment to the tank, then I would use sodium bicarbonate. If I'm dose, if I have low pH and I'm dosing my tank and one of my goals to raise the pH, then I'd want to use sodium carbonate because that one's going to give you a bit of a pH boost whenever you dose it. So kind of one way of thinking of it is if you want the pH boost, go for carbonate. If you want a big adjustment or you don't want it to mess with your pH, then go with sodium bicarbonate. Okay, can you explain the theory behind testing elk? And in theory, you will know where calcium and mag are. I believe science has the coral slash invert will use up elements in balanced ratios. Okay, for the most part, yes. One thing that I find interesting that I've been kind of digging into is with the Elkatronic. We have a new product coming out called the Dosetronic. And apparently you have some algorithms in there to dose your mag and your calcium and everything based on your elk consumption. And it goes along that same theory that it should be pretty much balanced. And I believe they give you some room to tweak it if your system needs more of one or the other. Now in the past I have had, I've never dosed perfectly equal parts. I've always had my tank suck more elk than calcium. So I don't know if there's a direct ratio, but once I found that ratio, you know, if I upped one, I tend to up them both in the same percentage. So that kind of worked. Uh, curious what imperators are in commercial calcium reactor medias. Okay, so calcium reactor medias. So we have, okay, so we have, we talked about calcwasser, we got our calcium chloride, sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate, and your magnesium. When I dose magnesium, I've always mixed magnesium sulfate and magnesium chloride. So I've always mixed the two together. Um, I believe most of the aquatic branded stuff are a mix of the two. And just because there's certain different minerals and elements, and that way you're just giving it all the magnesium goodness that it wants. Um, so I started... I've always been curious on the impurities. Yeah, so generally the stuff that's branded for aquatics and tanks is gonna, not going to have as many of those byproducts and stuff in it. Um, impurities, that's proper proper terminology. Uh, I just started dosing and found that KH only dropped in five days. Is that normal? Dropped by how much? Like one, one DKH in five days? If so, I mean, that's a decent consumption. Like that's the point where you know you could get away the weekly water change but in the near future or if you're still adding coral i would start to consider dosing okay now with the calcium reactor so calcium reactor it could possibly have impurities but for the most part it is little chunks of coral skeleton so there really shouldn't be much for impurities in it um this is why i kind of went back to it because i like the idea that it's dosing 24 hours a day that every second or two i'm getting that drip of that saturated solution that has calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium all in one. So that's kind of a, a nice balanced way to do it. Uh, so Ruben, so it dropped two DKH in five days. Okay, so that's about half a DKH a day. I would start to consider dosing. Like, that's a good chunk. So if you're not dosing yet, I would definitely look into that. Uh, K-Town Reefer, what is going on, my local friend? Uh, Howie, love to see you in live. Thanks for your wisdom. Thanks so much for joining and hanging out, Howie. Uh, Robert here, Victoria Brewer phosphates molecules can stick to calcium carbonate crystals under the right conditions. Okay, perfect. So there you go. You got it from, from the wise master's mouth. So it sticks to carbonate, calcium carbonate crystals. All right. So perfect. Thank you for answering that. I've read it, but I've never tested or to know if, how much it actually works. I do have a big box of calc wash in my shed, but I haven't used it in ages since I built one of my reactors in the past. 
Um, so a couple questions from Kyle earlier that I'd written down today, how long or how many tests should be done before you know for sure how much to dose your tank? So I always like to look at it over 24 hours. So if you're seeing a test or like for instance, uh, so Ruben was saying two DKH over five days. So that's half a DKH per day. If you test your tank, wait 24 hours, test it again. Now, in Ruben's case, that should be about 0.5 of a swing. So once you do that, you can look at whatever your preferred dosing supplement is, and most of them should have instructions. Like, for instance, this says 5 grams per 45 gallons will give you 1 DKH per day. So on this one, so assuming Ruben had a 100-gallon tank, that would mean 5 grams would do half a DKH on a 90-gallon tank. So I know 5 grams of this, so I could do that manually or you can mix up a dosing solution and dose whatever that works out to in the mills. So it's kind of one way of thinking about it. Ah, essentially old sand can trap phosphates and leach it out too. It's interesting. Uh, so higher elk equates to greater chemical stability. The more acid re required to cause a chemical change, the more resistance. Chem change is desirable for growth. Um, I'm curious on boring algae, sponges, organics, coralline contributing to the media. Inorganics, I'd imagine, would be largely inconsistent. Ah, that's a good question on that one. <coughs> I don't think it would be a massive thing. A box of kelp washer laying around, no good. Um, Yeah, it's been in my shed for a while. It's like literally like a 50 pound, I think it's a 50 pound box. It's in a big garbage bag wrapped up, so hopefully it's still good. But it will absorb CO2 over time and lose some of its potency if it's not sealed properly. So if you are using Kelkwasser, make sure it is sealed. Good point on that one. If you guys know, like, have you seen those CO2 scrubbing medias? They're essentially like a Kelkwasser pellet in a pelletized form. And that will absorb CO2. So another kind of thing to consider. So make sure you keep it away from moisture if you're going to keep it for a while. Okay, now I do have, if you guys have any other questions, let me know in the comments. What was one other one I had? Uh, would you be able to talk about dosing systems for smaller tanks? So in a smaller tank is really the same as a big tank. The only difference is how much you're actually dosing to the system. Um, same thing on a small tank, weekly water changes could likely be all you need. But if you're having more than like a, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 DKH change a day, I would really start looking at a dosing system. Anything more than, you know, one DKH over the week, I'd really consider doing it. Uh, Devin, why are you not doing Triton? You know, I've considered Triton. I haven't done it yet. Um, I did, however, get an ICP test. I haven't done it yet. I'm trying to let my tank sit for a little bit. My tank's been going, or the upgraded tank, which is half old tank, half new tank, has been up for about a month. So I've been using the calcium reactor for a little over a month now. I'm going to give it a few more weeks, and I might do a Triton test and see if there's anything missing. And if there is, then that's going to help point me in the right direction of what I should look at for a trace element. So I haven't done a trace element on my tank yet. I've been thinking about it. So this is kind of why I'm like, hmm, so this would be a prime opportunity for a Triton test. Because I know you get some trace elements of a calcium reactor, but what all you get? Not a clue. Um, so this is the only way I'm really going to know if there's anything lacking for my tank. And if there is, then I can find a trace element that has whatever's missing. So that's my game plan. Um... Uh, so yeah, no trace elements yet. But yeah, there you go. That's the best answer. I have not dosed any yet, and I have purposely not dosed any on purpose because I don't want to skew that future Triton test that I plan on doing because that's the only way I'm going to know what I actually need to dose, not rather just randomly dosing just for fun. Uh, the way I see it, calcium reactor media equals dead coral, meaning what was in the corals, what needs to grow. Okay, so yes, that is true. The only thing to consider is it is the coral skeleton. You're not really getting whatever's in the, the fleshy polyp of it. So you're getting a good chunk of what it needs to grow and establish itself. But I still think there's traces that are going to be in the skin, in the flesh, other stuff that won't necessarily be in that calcium reactor media. So that's something that you should potentially look at. Uh, starting January, you're going to have Triton. Very nice, very nice. I want to test on a calcium reactor. Heck yeah, I think that would be a great way to do it. It'd be interesting to test one just straight out of the calcium reactor effluent and then test one on the tank and kind of see. That, that could be a really cool thing to do. Trace elements either doing so yeah I'm gonna test the tank but yeah I think it'd be cool to do multiple tests on straight up the media it'd be re also really cool if you had say 
a calcium reactor with like our media and you add another one with reborn and then see what trace elements are actually coming out of that fluent. That'd be another really cool thing to do. So Marine Depot, that's a good test because you guys probably have sweet deals on all those testing. <laughs> so it'd be a cool one. I think it'd be like a cool little like investigates type of series. Uh, nitrates are largely contributing to the soft tissue growth rather than laying carbonate skeletons. Yes. Now I believe there's like strontium and iodine and some other ones that have some more value that I don't know if it's being mixed, what's necessarily being dosed through the calcium reactor, but it'll be a great test. And yeah, I'm really curious to find out. So probably, probably a few more weeks before I'll actually do that trading test. I just wanted to give it lots of time to make sure whatever's in there is actually coming from the calcium reactor and not stuff lingering from my old tank since I did mix the waters together. Okay, now I have a question for you guys because I also do want to do the draw in a little bit for the equal doser. Do we just do a quick one and pick a winner or do we pick X number of finalists and then throw it on the wheel and then see who wins from there? What do you guys think? I see an Ecotex lab article in the future. I know I should see if I even want to collaborate on something. That'd be good. Uh, now you guys were asking, uh, I want to see this auto tester at Macna. At Macna actually, there was one cool one. I think it was, I don't know if it was Reef Labs. It was my video, but it's like basically a little machine with a syringe and will automate all your tritation tests. <laughs> Say hi to Orion. I will, Wendy, I will. He's actually, he was in here. I think he left on me. Um, so. Yeah, it might have might have been Reef of Plus or Mac, I can't remember. But I did do a video and had a clip of that automation tritation tester. And that test is whatever you want. It's really cool. Uh, how often is everyone testing for elk and calcium? So when I'm overly motivated, I would test on a weekly basis. Do the wheel. <laughs> and when I'm doing... If I'm trying to tune in my dosing or trying to tune in a calcium reactor, you would ideally want to test every day for a while, right? So you... Just so you know, okay, if I toast, test now, test 24 hours later, and it's too high or too low, and then you can tweak it and go from there. So I say test daily while you're dialing your dosing or your reactor, and then once everything's stable, then go to testing weekly or every other week. So basically, the longer it's been stable, the more you can stretch it out a bit. Now, I also have the Alcatronic running my tank now. So it tests my alkalinity every 12 hours. So that's getting tested twice a day. The rest of the things every like week or every couple of weeks, I'll just test everything just to kind of redo my baseline and make sure everything's still in check. Now, earlier you're asking why I'm not doing Triton. If I've considered it, I might was debating doing a very small amount of Triton, maybe like a mill a day or something more for the trace elements stuff on top of the calcium reactor. Haven't bothered yet, but I'll see what's actually lacking after I do a Triton test eventually and then go from there. Um, all right, guys. Okay, so you guys want the wheel. So, all right, so we'll do the wheel for the, the contest. Okay, how many finalists should we pick to go into the wheel? So I'm looking at it. There is, because there was multiple ways to enter for the contest. There is 1,062 actions slash entries. And I think there was 265 people that actually entered the contest. I'm trying to figure out where it actually says it. Reporting. Yeah, 252 people in there. So your chance is about 1 in 252. Uh, Tristan's Reef, not affecting the growth. Are you running the rollers, Evan? Yes, I am. So I've been running the SK3000, I believe it is. And that's the D&D &D Aquarium one, uh, Claire C. So I've been running that one and it's been working pretty well. It's If you look at the difference between like the white and the nice dark mucky roll, it's amazing how much it pulls up. Um, so two things that I've done since then. I, I raise it up a little bit. So the theory is, is that the higher it is, the more water pressure is gonna be pushing down on the filter. So it should make it filter a little better. So you should get a little more bang for your buck out of the roll. So I did do that. I also did open the bypass door a little bit. So I do have some water bypassing out and then the rest of it being filter rolled up. The rail's still super black even with my bypass door. So I am pushing a lot of water through it. And that's one of the reasons this is to like alleviate a little bit. And then the other reason it's just because, you know, I don't know if I want it perfectly nothing in it. So I think it's pretty good. Congrats on the gauge from Devin. Why, well, thank you. Uh, wheels should be for people who smash those thumbs up. So what do we have? We have 10, 100, 12, 50. If you guys are enjoying this, smash that thumbs up. Hit that like button. Makes me happy. Makes YouTube happy. I appreciate it. Christmas spirit. On that note, there is a contest every week this month. Merry Christmas. 
So hopefully you guys like it. Okay, so okay, pick a number. Okay, so we got 112, 50. What do you think? 20 people, 30 people? How many should we do in the wheel? Uh, I see you pumping ozone into your skimmer. I almost did the same thing, but I read the auto neck cleaner isn't ozone safe. I do not quote me on this one, but I feel like I contacted them and they said it was fine to run ozone on it. The skimmer, I definitely asked Coral Box and they said it was good. Um, I'm pretty sure I asked Avast Marine though and they said it wasn't an issue. But I do run ozone. I run a small amount. I don't do a lot of ozone. Too much ozone is trouble. Like too much can be harmful. A little bit has tons of benefit. So something to keep in mind. Uh, pick 10 qualifiers for your raffle. I'll send the nine losers a filter cup and stick them in some stickers. Whoa, Marine Depot. All right. Bonus, bonus filter cups for the qualifiers. That's awesome. All right, 10 it is. Robert, thank you. That is awesome. And Ryan, who just subscribed if you're on the stream, welcome to the channel. Okay, so we'll pick 10. So, all right, so let me modify the contest, the 10 winners, and I'll let it draw it, and I'm gonna copy and paste those names onto the wheel. Okay, so 10 winners, save. All right, here, let's see if I screen share it. I'll let you guys watch. Watch it all and see who's into the final rounds. Uh, this one, boom. All right, so 1,000 entered. Winners, okay, so I'm, I changed it to 10 prizes. So we are going to draw 10 winners. Um, That is very awesome, thanks, Robert. <laughs> All right. Good luck, everybody. That was just to get the heart tempo up for people watching. <laughs> okay. All right. We're back to our original 10 people. And elimination round for whoever's going to win the equal doser. Scott Gould. Sorry, Scott. It was a good effort, though. Good effort. Good effort. Ah, oh, Garinger. Sorry, Garinger. Yeah, I know it wasn't removing them. I changed the options, so now it is. So now it should be get it down until the one last survivor. Oh, Anthony. Sorry, Anthony Benedict. From the top. Oh, NATO. Sorry, NATO. You may or may not have been on the stream. You do show up quite a bit, so it might have been. All right, next spin. The only problem is it's not necessarily the same. Oh, Eddie. Sorry, Eddie. Is it's not the same as the YouTube name? So I don't know if you're actually in the chat. So if you are, I want to know. <laughs> oh, yeah, wheel man. Sorry, Eddie. Good effort. Merry Christmas anyways. And next, next. Oh, Alex. Sorry, Alex. E for effort. And E, Coral. <laughs> and, and, and. Matt Giles. Sorry, Matt. Three left. Ah, oh, Kevin. Sorry, Kevin. Poor Anthony got eliminated three times. Just to rub it in, right? Ay, ay, ay. What's going on, Blue Carbon Reefing? Okay. Two left. 50 50 chance. And, and. Ah, oh, sorry, Anderson. Which leaves? Which leaves? Santos is the winner. Congratulations, Santos. Now, Mr. Santos, I just want to confirm. Santos, you are in the States. You are valid. You are in Frenzo, California. So I will shoot you a message afterwards. And Robert, thank you so much for helping sponsor some bonus gifts. That is really cool of you guys. Really appreciate that, Marine Depot. That's awesome. So everyone was on there. Everyone's still winning. Yes. Did I go early? Sorry, Blue Carbon. I don't know what the real name is, to be honest. Okay, so if you guys... Yeah, Santos, if you're on here, awesome. Congratulations. And the rest, super cool of Marine Depot. Now, stream topic. So that one, I will have to email Santos. I'm going to leave that open so I can contact him after the stream. So pretty awesome. Santos, if you're on here, congratulations, buddy. And Merry Christmas. Uh, Tristan's Reef. Super cool. And Marine Depot, you guys are rock. Awesome. Really appreciate that. So that is the top 10 people. Victoria Brewer, congrats. I have a question. Victoria Brewer, are you in Victoria, BC on the island? 
find all the all the random people. All right, guys. So you are welcome. I am out of here. Ping me with the list when you got a chance. I will get them in the mail. Robert, thank you so much. If you guys don't check out Marine Depot, look at them. Sponsoring bonus stuff. They're awesome. Make sure you guys support them. Check them out. And I do have a link to them in the description below if you want to check out some of the dosing supplements, which you might need if you start to dose. So thanks so much. Thanks for participating, supporting Devin, one of my favorites. Thank you, Robert. Much appreciated, man. Much appreciated. And I got to get you on a future stream again. That was a lot of fun last time I had you on. All right, guys. If there is any more questions or different things you guys want me to dig into for dosing, let me know. Um, if you want to support the channel in Marine Depot, check out the links in the description below. Um, starting for dosing, really what you want to dose is kind of up to you. Most of the two parts are fine. Calc wassers, the easiest if you have a low demand starting out. But at the end of the day, you're not going to know until you test, right? So testing is important. I know people don't like to do it, but do it. Lisa, thank you very much. If you're enjoying this, smash that like button. Christmas spirit. And make sure you guys are sticking tuned to the rest of the giveaways because there's still three more weeks of giveaways, maybe even more. I might even work on an extra bonus one. We'll see. I'm trying to work on with a couple different companies to try and do some more promo like giveaway stuff for the holidays because it's fun. And I like supporting you guys that support me. So sharing the love, guys. All right. I think I answered all the questions. Um, someone was asking earlier about if, a ref if they had some algae or green hair algae in their tank and they want to know if a refugium would outcompete it. I don't know if I actually answered that one, but that would scroll back earlier on that one. So if you need to, that whole point of running refugium, whether you're running a turf scrubber or chato, whatever it is, you, you ideally want to have a fairly powerful light. I did do a video of like insane cheeto growth a while back and some people are like, oh, it grows under my $5 CFL. Yes, it will grow, but a 90 watt LED versus a very three watt CFL is a big difference. It will grow. Your Cheeto will live, but it's not going to grow as fast and as dense and pull as much nutrients out. So being able to have a higher powered refugium, turf scrubber, cheddar reactor, whatever it is, is the whole point is you want to have enough light and juice down there to outcompete your thousands of dollars light on top of your reef tank. So it's pulling out those nutrients. So we can dig into that one more in a future stream, but hope that kind of answers it. If you have hair algae in your tank, manually remove what you can. You get those nutrients down over time through your chato, through your water changes, and you'll eventually get rid of it. If there are certain issues, little spots in your tank, um, you can spot treat it with hydrogen peroxide. However, do not exceed one mil over 10 gallons. Um, if you deals too much, it could burn your fish's gill and be harmful. It basically oxidizes in the water, kind of like an ozone does. So a little bit's okay, too much is bad. So a thousand watt gorility. Okay, you have a ton of light, 100 watt. Still a ton of, a ton of light. Uh, Neat for Afer. Thanks for everything, Dev. All right, every guys, you guys, Merry Christmas. I still got to film a video for Monday in the next day or two, but there will be one more giveaway coming out. Hopefully everyone enjoyed this. If you did, smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and that bell, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Thanks, guys. Merry Christmas.